Hello, today we're reviewing the latest case from Montec, and this is their R903 Max. For the white version that I've got here, it's going to cost you 79 US dollars, while the black version is four dollars cheaper. And this case has an awful lot going for it. It's actually got quite a few premium features that you would not expect to find in a case of this price point. So let's dive in and take a closer look. To remove the tempered glass side panel, there's two captive thumb screws at the back which we need to loosen, and then the panel can be pulled backwards, tilted out, and lifted away. To remove the other side panel again, there's two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen, and the panel can be pulled backwards and lifted away. Taking a look at our top I.O., we've got a power button, we've got two USB 3.0 Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. We've got a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've also got a reset button and an LED button to cycle through the ARGB effects on the case's built-in ARGB controller. On the top of the case, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter which can simply be pulled away. On the front of the case, we've got a magnetically attached panel. If we take a look at the back of it, you'll notice there's no separate dust filters, so Montec are just going with mesh on the front. If we take a look at the side of the front panel, you'll notice there's additional areas of perforation designed to further increase the airflow. With the front mesh panel removed, you can see the three 140mm ARGB fans that Montag have pre-installed at the front of the case. If you prefer, you can mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator at the front. At the back of the case, we've got another 140mm fan. This one doesn't have any ARGB on it, and it is important to point out that all four of the case's pre-install fans have four-pin PWM connectors on them. At the top of the case, you're going to be able to mount up to three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans, and again up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. On the power supply side, you're going to be able to mount a further two 120 millimeter fans. They're designed to sit on top of the power supply scroud, and then you're going to use a long radiator screw to secure the fans to the holes in the bottom of the case. Although, unfortunately, the screws you're going to need to mount fans at the bottom aren't included with the case. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to AITX in size, and if you want to go with the CPU air cooler, the maximum height supported is up to 180mm. At the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slots, and the case will accommodate larger graphics cards up to a maximum length of 400mm. At the bottom of the case, we've got a tray-style dust filter over the power supply's intake. Moving into the rear compartment, and it's great to see that we've got three Velcro cable straps in the middle of the case, as well as plenty of other cable tie-down points. All the cutouts through to the main body of the case look to be in sensible positions, and it's good to see that we've got rubber grommets over the two main cutouts over to the right-hand side of the motherboard. In terms of cable routing space, this looks to be pretty good. The case comes with a combined PWM and ARGB hub, and we can see our four pre-installed case fans are already plugged into the hub, meaning that we've got three spare ARGB connectors and two spare PWM connectors. It's good to see that we're going to have motherboard control for both PWM and ARGB of anything plugged into the hub. In terms of drive mounting locations, we've got two dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting brackets behind the motherboard. And as well as this, you're going to be able to mount another two 2.5 two inch drives to the rubber grommets towards the front of the case. At the bottom of the case, we've got a hard drive cage, which will accommodate up to one 3.5 inch drive in the hard drive cage itself. While on top of the hard drive cage, we're going to be able to mount either a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive. The hard drive cage is movable and removable, so there's two different positions that we can install it in. Um, alternatively, you can remove it, making more space for your power supply and associated cables. In terms of power supply support, the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 240mm. And if we take a look at the back of the case, as you'd expect in a case in this price point, that there's no removal power supply bracket. So we are going to have to install our power supply in from the side before screwing it in from the back. So what I want to do now is give you a look at the build I put together in the case. So take a look at our temperatures, our i7-13700K idled at 34 degrees and it reached a maximum of 101 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. 
our Zosa Gaming RTX 3070 idled at 27 degrees and reached a maximum of 64 degrees during the 10 minute stability test. In terms of noise levels, we had an average noise of 38 decibels at idle and 51 decibels under load. Now, in the build I put together, I used a Valkyrie AIO, which is an AIO I had never used before. So I wanted to get a little bit of data on how good that AIO actually was. So I swapped it out for the Deepcool one here. And in terms of the temperatures, they were actually one degree worse under load with the Deepcool AIO. So if you are wanting to copy the build guide, you can actually be fairly reassured that the AIO I used in the build guide is actually a pretty good quality. The final thing that I wanted to do with thermal testing was removing the front panel to see did it make any difference to the temperatures. And in fact, there wasn't really any significant difference. In fact, our temperatures were one degree hotter with the panel removed, which is within the margin of error. So this tells me that actually the front panel in this case is actually pretty good and not that restrictive. So now I want to come on to my experience of building in the R903 Max. And building in this case was really, really straightforward. I think that's because it is quite a large case. We've got plenty of sensible cutouts in good places. The four case fans are pre-installed and wired up to the RGB and fan hub for you. So actually there's very little that you need to do and very little that can go wrong during the build. Cable management at the back was really good with the included Velcro cable straps and I had no difficulty getting the side panel back on again despite the fact that I had used cable extensions for the 24 pin cable. I suppose the only thing to point out is if you are planning on going with fans at the bottom and top of the power supply shroud, the screws that you're going to need to secure to the case aren't actually included in the case accessory box. What you're going to need is some standard radiator screws, the ones that you would use for attaching the fans to the AIO. And if you use the AIO that I used in the build guide, it actually comes with an additional set of radiator screws, allowing you to install a push-pull configuration on the AIO. So you'll be able to use eight of these screws to secure two fans to the bottom. Alternatively, you can pick them up for a couple of pounds on Amazon. So now I want to come on to the things I liked about the case, and there's actually a pretty long list of things I like about this case. Starting off with the aesthetics, I think this is a really good looking case. Um, I really like the fact that it comes with four 140mm fans which look and are going to cool much better than the 120mm fans you get included with most budget cases. And as well it's nice to see we've got ARGB on the three fans at the front. The other thing is Monta have skimped and included DC controlled fans. We've got proper four pin PWM fans which is a really nice touch. The fact that we've got the included fan and ARGB hub and we've got motherboard control for both ARGB and PWM. Again, some of the features you wouldn't expect to get in a case of this price point. We've got rubber grommets over the two main cutouts to the right hand side of the motherboard. And in terms of cable management, it's great to see that we've got Velcro cable straps included at the rear. If we take a look at the case accessory box, all the screws come individually labeled and packaged. And it's great to see that we've got the standoff insertion removal tool included as well. It's also great to see that the case comes with both an LED control button and a reset button because what a lot of other cases are doing is simply repurposing the reset button to control the LED controller. So now I want to come on to the things I didn't like about the case and in a case costing less than $80 it feels a little bit unfair mentioning some of these particularly given the fact that we've already got so many premium features in this case you wouldn't expect. The reason I'm doing it is Montec cases have just got better and better with each one that I have reviewed. They do listen to our feedback and I've used it to improve their cases. So that's the reason I mentioned some of these. So my first point is the case accessory box was absolutely brilliant with everything individually labeled and even things like the standoff insertion and removal tool included. But it was a little bit disappointing to find out that the screws to mount fans to the bottom of the case weren't included. And it would have been a nice touch to have included these. The other thing to mention is it's a little bit disappointing that the rear fan doesn't have any ARGB on it. And I don't think it would have cost an awful lot more to the price of the case to have given us four fans with ARGB on it. When you consider that the base version of this case, which comes with three PWM fans that don't have any ARGB on it, compared to the max version that I've got here, which is three ARGB fans and one non-ARGB fan, the price difference is only $10 between those two cases. So I think it probably would only have been maybe up to $5 max to have changed the back fan to have ARGB on it. And I think it just would really have improved the look of the build. The final thing to mention is the front panel connectors came as individual cables. 
And what a lot of case manufacturers are now starting to do is combine these into one cable, which makes certainly plugging them in that little bit easier, certainly if you are a new builder. Again, this is not a feature that you find in budget cases. It tends to be in more premium cases. But Montek, if you're looking for one little thing that you could change to take the case to the next level, this would be something that would be really nice to see. So we've now reached the stage in the review where I need to tell you, should you go out and pick up this case? So if you want to get a premium case with lots of premium features, but only pay a budget price, then Montek have got you covered. This case is absolutely brilliant. And if it does actually go on sale for anything like its MSRP, you are getting incredible value for money. So in short, yes, you should most definitely pick this up. And this case is absolutely brilliant. So if you are wanting to do a build in this case, remember I have done a full step-by-step -step build guide in it. I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this case review, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.